Hi, I'm Nikki Mira, one of the women's ministry coordinators here at Grace Chapel. And we are currently studying the book, The Fruitful Life by Jerry Bridges, where we're learning to grow in um, living out the fruit of the spirit in our daily lives. And we meet on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. in the Worship Center. And all women, we would love to have you join us. We have something special for you now. <laughs> We're going to have a runway of sorts. <laughs> so walking the runway today are the fashions brought to us by Galatians chapter 5 in preparation for our new study, The Fruitful Life by Jerry Bridges. What you are seeing today is the fruit of the Spirit personified by ladies in our own fellowship from morning and evening. Wow. They are real people wearing real traits. Our first model is love. Kicking off today's pageant, love personifies one of the most basic of all traits of Christian character, which is love, displaying the presence of the Holy Spirit. Christian-based love always seeks to do the right thing. Wearing her heart on her sleeve and her knees, love's blouse is woven from unconditional love, which makes her able to love the sinner, but not the sin. Radiating the presence of the Holy Spirit, love is dependent upon God's grace, knowing that if acts of love are from her own strength, they are contrived and bear the stench of hypocrisy. Warming up for winter and comforted inside God's mercy, love wears an elegant and stunning cover-up that speaks the truth of 1 Peter 4, 8. Love covers a multitude of sin. She takes very seriously the commandment of Jesus given in John 13, 34, and 35, that we love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Godly love always seeks to do the right thing and walks closely with two other fruit bearers, patience and kindness. Love is humble, is not rude. She exercises restraint. She does not find pleasure in others' failures. She is consistent with her love in that she never gives up and love never fails. Thank you, love. <laughs> Joy. Deeply happy and spreading smiles of sunshine wherever she is, joy bubbles over and oozes delight. She exudes joy and exaggerated happiness. Others find themselves attracted to this magnetic person. True joy comes from knowing Christ as the one who saves us. The joy of the Lord is her strength. Joy knows that cheeriness based on circumstances is fleeting happiness. Her outfit today is a casual fabric that displays a big, bold, and bright print, an expression that the hidden person of the heart is secure in knowing Christ as the one who saves us. The joy of her salvation is restored, as in Psalm 51, 12, because she has confessed and is reconciled to him. As joy makes her way through a day, she may be heard softly humming songs of joy. At times, she can be heard making a joyful and seasonless noise to the Lord, breaking forth into joyous song and singing praises, as in Psalm 92, 4. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. And because of her commitment to the Lord, she can live a life of worship to him, who is in control of every detail of her life. Joy's outfit is accessorized by the quiet confidence that, regardless of the circumstance, she's determined to praise God in every situation. Thank you, Joy. Peace. Wearing a casual, serene peace, she is assured of her relationship with God. 
In wisdom, her outfit is embellished by a head covering, displaying the calm with which she is prepared to weather either storm or bright sun. Peace knows that when she approaches life in her own strength, any calm is merely an absence of conflict. But as she invites the Holy Spirit to work in and through her, she sits in peace, miraculously calm, in the middle of what might be crashing circumstances. She makes it her ambition to live at peace with everyone, as in Hebrews 12:14. Her heart and mind set on Christ Jesus. She is shielded and guarded by the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Like in Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is her closest ally in connecting with Jesus and finding comfort from him who will walk with her through all conflict to his glory. Thank you, peace. Patience? Oh, you are letting kindness go first. How kind? <laughs> kindness. Kindness is a sincere desire for the happiness of others. As she does, she is wearing a stretchy athletic fabric because she is ready for action and always looking for opportunities to act kindly and teach. As in Proverbs 31, 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Knowing what is good, as in Micah 6, 8, he has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Justice and humility are her closest friends. When she acts from her own strength, exercising without hydration from the word of God, she appears insincere because her spiritual muscles need the living water that rehydrates the soul. She carries that holy hydration with her everywhere. Because kindness involves action, truly kind people will enthusiastically look for opportunities to show kindness. You'll note today that kindness is wearing friendship and generosity, adorned with humility, wisdom, and grace, as she speaks to and cares for others out of love in obedience to Jesus Christ. Thank you, kindness. <laughs> Patience, are you ready? Oh, not yet. It is so good of you to let goodness go first. <laughs> this is goodness. Goodness is the activity calculated to advance the happiness of others. Wearing an elegant black dress today, goodness is walking with poise and righteousness. Though her garment is not made up of merely moral behavior or good works, it displays excellence of character or godliness, only possible through God's grace and mercy. When goodness is employed outside of his mercy, goodness appears proud, conceited, or arrogant. So as God selects the recipients of her acts of service through good deeds, and as she walks with him, she is obedient to him with joy. She is full of goodness and all knowledge as she instructs others in the way of the Lord. Goodness's character is accessorized by modesty and fear of the Lord. Thank you, goodness. <laughs> Patience, are you ready to walk the runway? Not yet, you're being patient. <laughs> Faithfulness, dressed in a hiking outfit of righteousness, a combination of humility and good judgment, faithfulness follows and carries out her convictions based on what the Bible teaches. Faithfulness knows that when we depend on knowledge, which we know puffs up, instead of wisdom, which fears the Lord, legalism within is exposed. But as she keeps his covenant and his testimonies, Psalm 25:10, all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. She is dependable, reliable, trustworthy, and loyal 
integris. Faithfulness radiates trust and loyalty, clearly exposing the submission of her own will to the will of God. She is fully aware that she needs a savior and that he is the blessed controller of her life. Faithfulness requires us to submit our ways to God. It comes from a place of realizing that we need a savior and that he is in control of our lives. The pants style made of righteousness protects her legs from barbs that come. Her two-tone top is a combination of humility and good judgment. She follows and carries out her convictions based on what the Bible teaches. In the readiness of Ephesians 6.15, Faithfulness wears a gospel of peace. Hiking shoes ready for the hike of a godly life in such a pagan world. Thank you, faithfulness. Patience, not yet, okay. Gentleness, sporting jeans and a t-shirt. Gentleness comes from a state of humility and flexibility. She is not prideful or easily angered and takes time to consider how she will respond to unkindness directed at her or others in her path. Gentleness, when worn outside of God's direction, appears self-serving, but the expression of gentleness based on submission to God's will brings glory to God. Humility and patience as it says in Ephesians 4, 2, help her bear with one another in love. Gentleness, often seen with conflict, is a good friend of kindness and faithfulness, wearing shoes ready for action to carry the gospel of peace, rightly using the word of God. This gentleness, as Billy Graham described, is a mildness in dealing with others. It displays a sensitive regard for others and is careful never to be unfeeling for the rights of others. When wronged, gentleness doesn't feel the need for revenge, but goes back to her prayer closet and discards the hurts, handing them to the Lord. Thank you, gentleness. Patience, using self-control, I see. Self-control, cut from the finest of cloth, self-control has donned a modest and careful garment. She is radiant as she resists temptation and avoids conforming to the things of this world. Our model has selected a business suit to demonstrate guidelines that she must follow imposed by herself. She is all about the business of making the most of every opportunity. Self-control, when worn outside of God's direction, is often interpreted as rigidity or legalism with rules for everyone. Proverbs 25, 28 says, a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Her self-control puts boundaries around her soul. Following the example of Christ, who is himself perfection, possessing every fruit of the spirit, he lived a sinless life among pagan people. He sacrificed his life by death for us because he wanted to, and then he rose victorious over death. Our self-control model is accessorized by righteousness, moderation, and frugality, walking carefully in the footprints of Jesus. Thank you, self-control. And finally, patience. Our model of patience today appears as a gardener. Luke 8:15 says, as for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. Waiting with grace in our pagan world, patience kneels near the brokenhearted and plants seeds waiting for God to do the growing. On her tool belt, she has seeds of mercy, belts of grace, and the inner beauty of humility.
Like Romans 8, 25, she hopes for what we do not see and waits for it with patience. When worn outside of God's will, patience is void of the other fruits of the spirit. It is an artificial attitude of postponing or waiting that looks a lot like a self-made martyr struggling to wear vulnerability. She is strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. That's from Colossians 1.11. Patience in God's will combines kindness, gentleness, goodness, joy, and love with self-control, peace as her closest friend, and as you saw in this fashion show today, graciously puts others first. Thank you, patience. So ladies, that is our Garment of Grace pageant. <laughs> Please join me in thanking each of our models. I'm gonna invite Debbie Lewis up now. I first want to invite you, if you haven't picked up your packet, please go back and get it because we're going to work on it today. So run back there really quick, back to the, the um, opening table, welcome table, and I'll set up while you're doing that. I don't know how you follow a fashion show like that anyway. All those professional models, wonderful ladies, qualities. <laughs> I thank you guys for doing that, because I know that can be really nerve-wracking to get up here and strut your stuff across the stage, but you did a wonderful, gracious job of it, so we'll just let everybody pick it up. And while you guys have that already have it, if you have a pen or a pencil out, you might want a highlighter. Um, we're just going to do some work today <laughs> and see how this, where this next study is going to lead us. Okay, as this really exciting fashion show is so creatively illustrated, we will be studying the nine gracious qualities found in Galatians 5, 22, and 23. Three of these qualities, love, joy, and peace, have a Godward focus, while patience, kindness, and goodness are displayed outwardly toward others. The last three qualities, faithfulness, gentleness, also connected with humility, and self-control are more inwardly, inwardly focused. These nine grace qualities are also commonly known as the fruit of the Spirit. But, there's a big but here. Please note that this fruit is presented as a singular fruit. It's not plural. Since we are all called to, preserve, to pursue all of them, not just the ones we are comfortable with. They are a package deal. Most of us have just finished studying the books of Habakkuk and Daniel pretty thoroughly. These books have been insightful, challenging, and surprisingly very applicable to our lives in today's world. Habakkuk and Daniel have also laid the groundwork for our, for our next adventure together. We will be using the late Jerry Bridges book titled The Fruitful Life as our map and our guide as we pursue the nine godly characteristics of a fruitful life. On our journey, we will gain valuable information about why we should be practicing them and actually how to practice them so that we too can be, how does Granny Joe put it? Um, so we can be fruitful exiles in this pagan land where God has placed us for 2022 and beyond. Throughout this journey, we will learn how to train, not buy or order from Amazon, our nine grace qualities as we strain for Christ-likeness. Not going to be an easy job. The book preface tells us that a healthy human life is a fruitful life. And the model for this fruitfulness is none other but God. Spoiler alert, 
This Christian character that we will be studying and trying to polish will require our participation and will be due to the work of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. These garments of grace that our fashion show delightfully illustrated will require us to actively put them on each and every day. We will be the ones responsible for such acts of daily obedience. And when we are properly attired, our harvest will yield fruit that can be preserved, increased, strengthened, and improved. That's a pretty lofty goal for a few short weeks. So this leads us to the original question I was given to address. How should we approach this new study? Well, I have compiled not one, not two, but eight study options for your convenience. So let's buckle up as we begin exploring these options. Plan A. If your coming week becomes hectic, imagine that. If you or your loved ones become sick, if your house floods, or if any other unexpected happening occurs that sets your week off kilter and sucks up every moment of free time, then just come and show up with or without your book. I can assure you that the worship will be great, the testimony inspiring, the teaching thought-provoking, and that your table leader and table members will welcome you with open arms. Just come as you are. Come be with us and spend some sweet time with Jesus. Blessings are guaranteed. Plan B. Plan B is for the ones who are able to budget time during the weeks ahead to read the chapter and even look over the study questions that can be found in the back of the book beginning on page 157 for next week's chapter one study. But before you turn there, these same questions can also be found in the printed packet you were given today. Here you can find not only the questions, but extra space for writing your comments and for adding comments made from ladies at your table. I love gleaning from the women at my table. Their insights, their life experiences and wisdom are priceless and noteworthy. Here we have room to jot everything down. Pretty nifty if you ask me. Some of you may be asking, well, how long are these chapters? How much time should I try to budget? These are both good to know questions for busy ladies. Well, after taking a few of Brad Hand's Bible Institute classes, which required a lot of reading, I developed a little habit of counting the chapter pages so I would know how much time to budget for weekly reading assignments. So here are my already calculated assigned reading pages for the following seven weeks. Let's add them to our topic schedule and then take a peek at our packet contents. So turn to your topic schedule. It should be, I think, the very first page. It's like this, right? Well, over on the third column, it says homework. And this is homework, not that we had to do today, but that we need to have done for next week. And somebody really intelligent and very thought, thought worthy put down for January 12th, this is our reading assignment. Now, anybody can figure out that one is, go ahead and write on the corner, 16 pages. Okay? And that's for the, for the rest of you that don't want to do any math at all. For January 19th, that one is 29 pages. For January 26th, 25th, I mean 25 pages. For February 2nd, 25 pages. Am I going too fast? Okay. For fe February 9th, 21 pages. For February 16th, 23 pages. And for February 23rd, 10 pages. So there's your list of page numbers. You can divide your week by five or by seven, whatever you want to do in the days, and just figure out, and just keep on track, or you can sit down and read it all at one time. It's up to you. Turn to the next page. The next page is chapter one, taking on God's, God's character. The coolest thing about it, I actually went back and highlighted mine. Up in the corner, it says, do before January 12th. So if you forget and you don't want to turn back to the first page, it's right there for you. And if you're traveling and you didn't bring your notebook with you, well, you know what? You just go to page 157 in your book and those same questions are there. Not as much 
writing room, but they're there. So if you're traveling somewhere, you could do your homework here and then just not even worry about your, your packet. If you have both, then you have extra room in your packet, you can answer the questions there. I kind of worked ahead because I can't tell you what to do if I haven't tried it. So I, I, I read my chapter one and I answered my questions and I, not quite done, but I did answer some. Notice I have a lot of extra room. That means my table ladies are gonna give me some really exciting things to fill in here. And I really love that part of WOW. I love to hear what people have to share and I like to write them down. So chapter one is right here for next week. If you go to the next page, notice it says chapter two and three. A lot of times we're taking two chapters at once. So it says due before not January 19th. If you turn to the next page, notice there's no due before because it's part of that assignment. And if you go to the next page, it says chapter four and five, love and joy, due before January 26th, and you'll find two pages there. And chapter six and seven, peace and patience, two pages there. And then kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Um, we've got a couple of pages there. And then gentleness and self-control, a couple of pages there. And then we end up with, oh, there's a, even an extra page on that one. Um, chapter 12, seeking a deeper devotion. Okay, so it tells you up in the corner when they should be done by, and you've got lots and lots and lots of room to write. Okay, so now you've kind of looked at your package, you kind of looked at the back of your book, so we know they're there and we know they're here, and you can just have a blast with it. Okay, I hope that helps. Let's go to Plan C. Plan C involves actively reading the chapter. This could involve underlining, using colorful highlighters, or even jotting down ideas and notes on the chapter questions in the back of the book, or in the handout, or some of you just can't get rid of your journals, so you want to do it in your journals. That's okay, too. This will help you gather your thoughts about the passages that were meaningful to you, and will aid your sharing time with your table members concerning those passages and verses that spoke to you that week. <coughs> Excuse me here. Some of you are gonna call this a book tragedy. I call it active reading and learning. So I like to highlight, I like to underline, I like to put little stars in there. Whatever is gonna help me remember, okay, and help me to, there may be something that I really wanna share with my table. If I don't write it down, I'm gonna forget it two days later, I'm old. So um, active reading, active learning, uh, if you call this a book tragedy, don't even, you didn't see this. You didn't see this, but that's how I like to do it. Um, Plan D. Plan D is for those of you out there who are a wee bit concerned about just studying a book and not actually studying an actual book of the Bible, like our previous Habakkuk and Daniel studies. You might be worried that we'll be focusing more on the author's opinions and not enough on the actual word of God. I come here today to tell you to fear not. Just in chapter one, there are, are you ready for this? 38 Bible passage references. So, if you are desiring a deeper scriptural study, your needs can be met by writing down each of the 38 scriptural references by hand, or you could use a laptop or computer and practice your keyboarding skills as you deepen your Bible knowledge. If you're old like me, repetition is the key to internalizing anything. So planned ears can not, not only read the chapter in Bible references, but they can also write them down, and then they can hear the teaching on it the following Wednesday. That's three times the input, if you have the time. I did this too. I'm not here to brag. I'm just here to tell you that this isn't a daunting thing. My keyboarding skills are pretty good. I really like the feel of writing the Word of God. I would love to someday say I've written the whole Bible, and if I stay in a while long enough, maybe I will. You know, But you can do the 38 verses, this is mine. So it took me one page both sides and another page both sides, and I even did the two long ones. You could summarize the long ones. You don't have to do that. I'm an overachiever, so I did it. Here's another one, and then there's a little wee bit on the fourth page. If you typed it, it would probably take you a page and a half, okay? That way, when it comes to those passages, you don't have to flip through your Bible trying to find them. You can just pull them out here, and then you know that you actually wrote them too. So just an idea. Take it or leave it. Plan E. Plan E is to do all of Plan D, but now if you are so led, you could memorize some of the chapter scripture references. If you were listening, you heard that there's plenty to choose from. Plan F is for the younger and definitely not the faint at heart. You, wonders of the earth, can memorize all 
the scripture references. There's only 38 for chapter one. I'm moving on. Plan G is for those of you that are bored with the sound of our English language. You, dear souls, may join our precious Heather Horning and read the chapters and verses with a Scottish accent. She would tell you that this is the absolute best way to learn just about anything, everything, and all while sounding quite delightful. Plan H is for those bilingual, trilingual, or quadlingual folks out there. I think I just made up a word. You ladies can go for the gold and prepare for the Gospel Olympics by reading the chapters and passages multiple times in multiple language, and I will raise my torch for you. You now have eight plausible study plans to pick from. Pick the one that is best for you, or combine one or two, or choose a different one each week, or create your own. Please, just remember to come and learn with us. Be filled with his spirit and cherish your time at the tables with ladies who care and love you. In conclusion, we have a great book in our hands written by Jerry Bridges. It references the word of God multiple, multiple times. Each week, we will have a wonderful opportunity to establish and practice our habits of grace, our fruit of the spirit. And maybe, just maybe, with the indwelling of his spirit, this fruit may become second nature and a natural part of our actual being. I don't think we want to miss this opportunity. Let's pray. Precious and almighty Father, we praise your name, we trust your promises, and we're pretty thrilled to uncover, maybe even a little scared, to uncover what you want us to learn these next few weeks. Thank you for giving us your word. It holds so many guidelines and instructions. Please give us eyes to hear, ears to listen, and hearts ready to be molded. Please guide each of the teachers as they research, study, write, and present. Our goal is always to glorify you. Please guide us in our humble attempts. Lord, thank you for wow, for the worship, the testimonies, the teaching, each table leader, and for every woman you have brought here. Let us be obedient to your call and your word. Help us to grow. Please help us to put on these garments of grace each day. And please help us to continuously practice your habits of grace. In the very precious name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>